Okay, in this demonstration, um, I'm going to do three different things, two of them on the jelly plate. The first one is a, a bit of a review. So you want to put about a little bit more than a quarter teaspoon of acrylic paint. I'm using open, which will take longer to dry. And one of the things I noticed last week is if you put too much paint, you're going to get these gushy blobs. So you don't want to put too much on, and then you got to keep moving your brayer back and forth until you get a relatively uniform layer of paint on your plate. At least that's what I would recommend. Okay, then I played with this using that painting of. Paul Clay's for inspiration. I thought I'm just going to do lines and grids and I'm going to use my angled palette knife. So if I use the top part, I can get very fine lines. And then if I use um, just the point of it, I'm not going to cut into my plate or anything. This was really fun. I can push down and then lighten up the pressure. So I can get this interesting wavy line. Do another one down here. Um, if I want to scrape out larger areas. And I'm already thinking ahead, like, OK, I'm going to pull a print. And this could be an area where I might put some collage material. So I'm creating a structure that then if this is on a thicker paper, I could I could use this as a compositional structure to build more um, layers on. using a dry brush just to get some texture in there. Okay, so now I'm going to pull a print. Okay, so there's print, print one. So this paper, it's watercolor paper, it's thick enough that I could come back in later and collage some things in here. I could layer some more paint, okay? I'll pull one, a ghost of this one. Okay, there's the ghost, which I often like better. Okay, now I'm going to show you, I talked about, um, it's called an ombre, which basically is, is two colors and getting them to fade into each other. Give me just a minute here, trying to find the right color. Okay. I'm 
going to do Prussian blue fading into Naples yellow. So this gets a little trickier. I'm gonna roll out the bottom half. Then I'll roll out my top half. And then gradually get them to merge. which is tricky, okay. Okay, so it does a fade, those two. All right, now I'm gonna do something I saw Peggy doing, which was rolling another, I think this is what you did, rolling another color on a piece of cardboard and putting that shape down. So I'm gonna go, with a lighter blue. Move this over so you can see it. And I'm just rolling this on a piece of um, disposable palette paper. I'm hoping this will work. We're rolling the negative space and I rolled the positive. Um, okay, but did you roll right on cardboard or did you paint on there? I'm feeling like the cardboard is absorbing a lot of paint. So I'm gonna, you know, I'm just gonna paint on there directly. Yeah, no, I, I, I think I was able to roll it on, but I don't even remember. You don't even remember, okay. So I'm gonna put that right there. And then I'm gonna do, let's see, I'll just do another little one. Okay. Okay, now I'm gonna put my paper on there. Cross my fingers, we'll see what I get. Okay, it didn't pick up as much paint as I thought it would, but I, I kind of like it. There's interesting stuff going on there. And I mean, this would be a great way to set up a, a composition. You know, you could have these stronger shapes. Um, okay, let's see. Now let me do, let's see what the ghost does doesn't appear to be a lot of paint on there. And then I can save these things as collage material, right? Super faint, but I can definitely build more things on there. Okay, um, what else? Let's see. Okay, this is does not involve the jelly plate. I was cleaning up and 
I was putting away my stamp pads, this is a very direct approach. Super fun and kind of addictive if I can get this thing open. All right, there we go. Okay, so I just took old book pages. Um, it could be regular paper. And I put the paper right on my stamp pad. And I just used various implements to transfer the ink from the stamp pad to the paper. I think this is this is what Paul Clay was doing, but he was actually making a sheet of paper that had um, ink on it. But this is this is a little bit simpler. Okay, okay hang on. Then there was. Okay, this is called a wood graining tool, and I just went like that. You know, I'm going to do it in black. It doesn't show up on brown. Oh, well, this ink pad is too old, so that gets thrown out. Okay, there's not enough ink there. All right, one more time. Okay, so it's transferring sort of these radiating marks. Um, a Lincoln log. All right, now I'm going to do something... that I thought was really fun. Let's say I want to do a face. And I'm just going to draw the face on here so you can see what I'm going to transfer. And I like this book page because it's got the line down the middle, which creates a bit of symmetry for the face. OK, so that's generally what I'm going to do. Okay, so I'm marking things out with my angled palette knife. But then put my fingerprints there. See what I got. Now that didn't come out as good as the other ones I had made. I'll show you some of the other ones I made. So if I can find them. Okay. So here's a really quick face. I could collage that onto something else and paint it. And I like that it gets that sort of soft edge that bleeds. Um, so I've got all this collage material that then I could add to my other prints or develop into something more. 